In this lecture, I'm going to talk a bit more about backpropagation algorithm in neural networks. And by now, you're already aware that backpropagation is something that we end up using whether we work with a single hidden layer artificial neural network or a deep neural network with multiple hidden layers. You've already seen how backpropagation was in a way being implemented to compute the error and this is an iterative process but I'm going to unpack the theory a bit more in this lecture. So again these are some of the things that you are already aware of and I'm going to pro provide a link to the PDF of this particular PowerPoint, but things like cost function, etc. These are things that you already know. And now we are just going to see how they tie up together. So again, and neural networks, they rely a lot on proper training. And a very fundamental part of this training is backpropagation, which was originally developed in the 1970s. And essentially, it is a much faster approach to learning. And it just expanded the scope of neural networks for solving problems. And it is the practice of fine tuning the weights of neural networks based on the error rate, that is loss obtained in the previous epoch or iterations in neural networks. They work iteratively and we feed in the inputs. Weights are usually assigned randomly and that gets fed through an activation function. We've already discussed the theory of an activation function and the output we get, we compare it with the actual output and then we'll get a loss and then essentially this will be fed back into the neural network and proper tuning of the weights ensures lower error rates and that's what we need in order to make our model more generalizable. So this is a simple neural network. So we have a one input neuron, one hidden layer neuron which is here and one output neuron. So basically with each neuron, we have a linear combination of inputs and weights, and that's something you already saw. So this is the input neuron, and we combine the random weights. And as I said, the weights will be selected randomly with the in inputs, and we have a linear combination, which is in turn fed into the activation function. And then we obtain the output neuron, and it is easy to see the forward propagation step is simply a series of functions where the output of one feeds into the input of next. So input, linear combination of weights, activation function, we get the output neuron. So we get the output A and the target or the response variable is Y. So cost function, as we have discussed before, is simply the squared error between the actual and predicted values. And our goal is to evaluate our model's output with respect to the target output, which is Y, in attempt to minimize the difference between the two. So we want to minimize the cost function. And in order to minimize the difference between our neural network's output and the target output, we, know, we need to know how the model performance changes with respect to each parameter in our model. So we need to derive the relationship between our cost function and each weight, and then we update these weights in an iterative process using gradient descent. And again, gradient descent is something we've touched upon. So in order to find the relationship between weights and cost function, we have theta 2, which is an input to Z3 here. So this is a theta 2 input to Z2. Z3 is an input to A3. And A3 is an input to J theta. So when we are trying to compute a derivative of this sort, we can use chain rule to solve. And I'm not going to discuss the chain rule because frankly, this is a mathematical detail that you don't need to know. I'm just acquainting you with the terms and all of these are built into PyTorch and other deep learning modules out there.
So I'm not going to, uh, we can just skip this. And obviously you'll have the PDF. So that's something if you want to go over these mathematical equations in detail, that's something you can do. So now when we have a more complex neural net networks, we have two neurons in our input layer, two neurons in one hidden layer, and then we'll get two neurons in our output layer. And essentially, then this is the kind of function that we'll follow. Like so. So I'm not again, this is again something I'm not going to discuss in detail, but the mean squared error as our cost function is like so. So when we are training on multiple examples, which is most likely to be the case, we'll also need to perform a summation of the cost function over all training examples. I'm not going to discuss these in detail because you don't have to know all of this mathematics and many of these and then we use this layer 2 parameters to reduce the computational cost. And with PyTorch, we do get the option of playing around with the L1 and L2 parameters. So what we have learned so far is that a way to calculate all of the partial derivatives necessary for gradient descent, which is the partial derivative of the cost function using matrix expressions. Partial derivative calculations start from end and worked way back to the beginning. And then we develop this new term which serves to represent all the partial derivatives that we would need to reuse later and then progress backwards through the network. So back propagation is simply a method for calculating the partial derivative of the cost function with respect to all of the parameters. The actual optimization of parameters is done by the gradient descent or another more advanced optimization technique. Generally, we established that you can calculate the partial derivative of layer one by combining these terms for the next layer forward with the activation of the current layer. So this is forward propagation and that's something that is quite intuitive and you're already aware of this. And then we compute the theta terms like so. And this term consists of all the partial derivatives that will be used again in calculating the parameters of layers further back. So this is the error term. And then we are going to compute the matrix. And this is the matrix of parameters which connects layer two to layer three. We send back the error terms in the exact same manner that we sent forward. So now with back propagation, we are going to send back the error terms the way we went forward. And the only difference th is that this time we are starting from the back and we are feeding an error term. So we are feeding this error term back layer by layer backwards through the network. And that's back propagation, which is the act of sending back our error. And then we are going to compute the theta one matrix like so in our back propagation. And for every layer except for the last, the error term is a linear combination of parameters connecting to the lay con connecting to the next layer moving through the network and error terms of that next layer. And this is true for all hidden layers since we don't compute an error error term for the inputs. And this is the last layer calculation. So again, and after we have calculated all the partial derivatives of the neural networks, we can use gradient descent to update the weights. So basically this is all what you need to know about back propagation. 
and this is not something that you have to implement mathematically at least when you work with practical data science and when you work with the common python or even r deep learning data science packages